All right, here we go. Are you ready, sir? Yes. All right. How does it feel to get to be here in Oklahoma at this horror con meeting all these beautiful people? Oh, man, it's so amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, I always love, I've been doing conventions since I was 11 years old, coming to them. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been to so many, and it's always so, so awesome to just come out here and meet you guys, the fans, and, uh, yeah, just to get to just hear about, like, just in what ways that you guys love the show and what ways you guys connect to the characters, and it's, uh, it is so, so, so awesome. And the amazing costumes, too. I'm, we got, like, four Carls in here, too. It is so, so cool. Yeah, and uh, half you guys have the eye patch, too, and it's like, man, that is a another level of dedication um but uh but yeah it's just it's really so so amazing so yeah thank you guys for coming out and wanting to meet myself and the other awesome people that are here and yeah i love it it's great awesome all right guys y'all know what time it is y'all make y'all's way out here to this red carpet lex is gonna meet you with a microphone time to shine oh that's what i'm talking about one two three four five six seven eight nine two <laughs> hi um what season was your favorite to film? What season was my favorite to film? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I think it's uh, I think it's season four. Season four was really it was so cool. We had we had um, we had a lot of new cast members like right at the start of the season, and it was such a, a cool season for my character to just have an awesome full arc from start to finish, and where um, this, you know completely different character by the end of it, and uh, it was actually it was so cool the. Um, uh, I think I was like 14 at the time, and so I, I used to love Phineas and Ferb. And the um, the guy who voices Phineas was one of the characters in in season four of the show. He was uh, one of the younger one of the younger uh, guys that got the um, the flu that was going around in the prison, and he had gotten sick. But it was so cool being in a scene with Phineas. It was like the cool <laughs> the coolest thing ever for you know me being. I think it was 13 actually. Yeah, so it was, it was so so awesome. Um, but yeah, season four, it was great. Who is your favorite person to work with? Oh man, honestly, everyone on that show was so awesome to work with. The whole cast, the whole crew, they were really, really, really amazing. Um, I really loved working. Yeah, some of the crew members were just awesome, like the, you know, the PAs and the, you know, the camera crew, the sound guys, the set deck, and everyone. It's like they worked. Uh, just as hard, probably harder than a lot of us, at, you know, actors on on the show. So it was uh, so much of like the fun environment came from just the you know hundreds of of crew members that were there compared to the you know few of us of, of on the cast. But um, cast wise, I mean, Andy, the guy who played my my dad, Rick, on the show, was like the the coolest guy ever. He brought so much dedication and passion to that show every single day and just really set the bar for how intense it was going to be that day of just like you know because if he's if he's putting in that level of of passion and energy and investment then everyone else needed to match it and I, i really do think that's that's part of the reason why the show was you know as good as it was for so long is because everyone was just inspiring each other to just push harder and um you know work that extra half an hour get that extra shot and uh and yeah go the extra mile yeah my question is, I hope you still remember this, would you ever do a live rendition of Carl Papa? <laughs> <laughs> Lajiki Jar Jar do. Yeah. There's my live rendition. That's all you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. How many of you guys have seen the video? You know how many times I get asked if I've seen the video? (laughs) So many times. I love the video. It's so great. I when when those videos came out, um, I I would go like run around showing the whole you know the cast and the crew the the videos. It was just so funny. I just love that people actually liked our work and you know putting their own fun spin on it. So yeah, it's it's awesome. If you guys haven't seen those videos, Google just bad lip reading Walking Dead. It's hilarious. They like re voice over uh, our our lines and just make us say ridiculous stuff. It's great. Yeah. What, who's your favorite villain? Oh, Governor. 
Yeah. It's it's a tie between the governor and Shane, to be honest. Like, really? yeah, yeah, because like they're just they're so, oh man, especially in the comics, like the governor is just like next level brutal, you know, like way more so than at least Negan, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, of course, I mean, all the all the villains that we've had on the show, like, so so amazing and. The uh, you know the casting directors that we've had on the show always did such an awesome job picking like the best people for the uh, for those roles, not just acting wise, but like you know good to work with on set wise. You know what I mean? So it was always very very cool. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Tanner. I've like met you twice now, but like sorry. Um, I'm nervous. Sorry. Um, I was wondering what it was like to get the script with Negan in it and seeing like the circle and having all of the theories online like that like all summer i was wondering what it was like getting that script yeah yeah it was great i mean so i um i'm a big i was a big fan of the comic books i read all of the issues i read them all as they were coming out how, how many comic readers we got in here wow all right that is that is yeah it's usually like three people nice that's awesome yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh yeah, so I I kind of knew going into it what uh what to expect. I mean, we all kind of did on on the cast. We all kind of knew what was um what what was supposed to be coming. And yeah, I mean, I um after we we shot that um we filmed that scene at the end, it wasn't like we we weren't all like really like openly talking about who it was going to be you know i actually didn't know who it was going to be i i i felt pretty confident it wasn't going to be me <laughs> um but i i legitimately i honestly didn't know until i got the script for the next for the next season i know the some of the actors were told but um i i i did not know until um until i got the until i got the script and actually when i got the script for the episode what they did is they had we had three different versions of that scene that we actually shot oh, wow. and they were color coded and uh, <laughs> he, they had to like tell us in like for like in like an individual like a text or an email or something which color coded version was the actual version that we were like you know was was going to be happening but the rest of it we were just shooting to like try to minimize like the leaks and everything else because we had a really bad leaking problem for a while yeah. and uh yeah, and so each each like different version of that whole sequence that we shot were were different people getting killed. Oh. So for one of the versions, it was yeah, Glenn and Abraham. Okay. Another version was, um, I believe it was Eugene and Aaron, and then I think it was Aaron and oh man, who else was it? I think it might have been. Oh gosh, I can't remember. Might have been. Might have been Aaron and Maggie. I can't. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, God. but but there was still like we we and we just like kind of like flew through them because we weren't going to use them. It was just like okay, put the camera up, one take of this done over with. But it was just so we had the footage because we figured whoever was leaking it was probably in post production. So, um, but it still didn't help anyway because it still got leaked and there was a whole thing. Um, there was a rumor going around that that we shot a death for each one of us for all of us. Oh yeah, I heard that one. Yeah, I yeah. I'm scared of that. Story. Yeah, we did actually. It, well, we we did do that, but we showed it in the episode, oh. and it's it's uh, when Rick is like having, you know, oh, yeah. like I visions of like everyone getting hit or something or you know, things like that. So that's where that rumor came from. But we did actually shoot it, and we did like air it on on screen. But it wasn't like a full death scene. It was just okay. like get hit with a bat. Thank yeah. Thank you so much for answering my question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Chandler. Um, uh, I have two questions, but first of all, I would like to say thank you f for so much, so much for doing what you do. It means a lot to me. Um, and what is, sorry, um, do you have a personal favorite outfit from The Walking Dead? Oh, outfit. Um, oh man, that's a that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, the uh, the you know the wardrobe department always did such an awesome job with so many of the the, the uh, costumes that we wore throughout the show. All of us, you know. Um, oh man, I don't know. 
for for like non Carl wardrobe, like Michonne's like OG like costume is so sick i love it um but for carl i mean he kind of had kind of like bland <laughs> costumes here and there which makes sense like there's not a lot of options in the apocalypse but um yeah they they, they really just like to put us in layers lots of like jackets and like long sleeves and everything which you know when you're in georgia and it's like 106 degrees outside and you're in the woods and <laughs> it's not fun <laughs> Um, but uh, but they did a good job of always making making us look cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have one more question. Um, what would you do in an apocalypse and you're not allowed to say that you would kill yourself? Because I know uh, that's your basic answer. That is my go-to answer. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. I honestly, I don't know. I mean, like, I feel like Costco is, is everyone's, like, first answer, you know? Just, like, go and raid Walmart or Costco or, you know, something like that. Um, but I feel like it would just be a bloodbath, <laughs> you know? It would be a war zone, Costco. Um, it, it's kind of like COVID, actually. I guess it did turn into a war zone there for a bit. <laughs> Um, but, uh, oh man, I don't know. I mean, like, just, you know, find, like, a super isolated area, you know? And, I mean, a, the, like, prison, that's a great choice, you know? Or, like, Herschel's Farm, like, that's an awesome choice. So, um, I don't know. But somewhere with, sol- with solar panels, I found that that's, like, important, you know? You get, like, electricity still working and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Not quite sure. Sorry. Okay, thank <laughs> Lame you. Lame answer, I know. <laughs> Hello, Chandler. I have two questions as well. Um, the first one is, what was it emotionally like to kill your mom? Like, I just, I mean, I know that had to affect you as a person. Like, you were, and you grew up, you know, like you were a little kid. So, what was that like? This is my first question. Yeah, I was about as depressing as you could imagine it was. It was also, like, right around my 13th birthday, which was, like, probably the worst 13th birthday <laughs> like, anyone could have, could have had to have. But, yeah, it was it was not fun. It was, um, it took us, like, two days, two or three days to shoot that whole sequence. Um, so it was just, like, ten hours of crying every day. And, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was it was a bummer because she, you know, me reading the comics, I knew that I, I thought that she was going to be on the show for another, uh, like a long time. So it was, um, yeah, it was, it was really sad. But I think you know, it it had a really, really strong and long-lasting impact for the whole rest of the show, and and uh, it was, it was, you know. It was directed so well and acted so well from everyone that was that that I got to you know work in that scene with. So it was, um, yeah. I mean, it was really um, just yeah. It was it was really tough, but I'm I'm really happy with with um, how how well it was it was received and how um, how how well done it was. Okay. Yeah. My second question is, what does Norman Rita smell like? What does Norman smell like? <laughs> It's not very often I go and smell my my co-stars, you know. (laughs) He's kind of my crush, besides my boyfriend. But he looks really dirty, but I just feel like he smells pretty good. I mean... (laughs) He's... Yeah. I don't I don't know. I can't I can't remember really. I mean, we all showered like, you know, we just smelled, you know, like normal. I, they they put like dirt all over us and, you know, put all sorts of stuff to make us look yeah, like just oily stuff in our hair to make us look really dirty, but um I he probably smells just like a normal dude, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have two questions. First one is who are you closest with on set? Who was I closest with on set? Uh, probably, probably Andy. Yeah, the guy who who um, played my dad. Yeah, he was um, he was just awesome, and uh, I feel like everyone on that set felt like they were closest with Andy because he he just. Um, he he knew everyone on that set to like such a personal level. Um, knew everyone's name. Knew like all of like their families and what they were doing. Would always ask you know about my brother and how he was doing like cross country or my parents you know with uh, with their work. So um, it was always just like so invested and interested in everything that was going on in everybody's lives. And it was uh, it was really really great. A great role model for me to take into all of my other projects of like okay that's that's the standard like that's you know really how you treat people well on a set is um is with that level of, of respect my second question is how was the prison built like was it a set or how how was what sorry the prison built was it a set the, the prison yes yeah i'm sorry i thought you were gonna ask how norman smelled again uh, 
<laughs> I was, uh, so the, the, you asking about the, about the prison set? How it was built? Yeah, so that was actually was built on top of um, the the sound stages that we had, and uh, we yeah. So all the buildings that you see, there's just like just like fake brick, pretty much just like lining around the outside of those buildings, and uh, yeah, it was super cool. We reused that area so many times for so many other reasons. Um, right down the road outside where the prison was was where like the trash people their hideout was, like the big junkyard. Um, Let's see, the sanctuary actually was um, right around the bend. You know where Herschel gave his, like, um, uh, you risk your life speech and, every, and everything? You step outside, you risk your life and everything? So right around the corner from that is the sanctuary. That's where they had, like, the outside for the sanctuary, which it then turned into the exterior of, of the, the Commonwealth. So, like, they reused that area so many times for so many different um, purposes, and, and they really got their money's worth <laughs> out of that. And actually, right down the road... Um, through the through the woods outside the prison um, is where I got shot back in season two. It's where we had Father Gabriel's church. It's where we did the Negan like lineup. We did all of that in the same area. We just kept, kept like just move the camera like six feet and just <laughs> shoot it like it's a new area. Um, further down the road was the um, uh, hilltop, and then like a quarter mile down the road from that was Herschel's farm, and then like right before that was. Um, uh, the uh, ocean side, so it's all it was all within like a half a mile radius was like for the whole show. It's very cool. I'm gonna uh, keep up the kind of routine we've had of two questions. Um, my first one is, what scene was your favorite to film out of the entire show, and why? Oh man, I think it's it's it's. Uh, it's got to be when Carl's eye got shot out. That was just, that was such an awesome, awesome sequence. Um, again, being a big fan of the comics, I knew that it was a big deal for, for, for the character. And um, I remember when I was told that it was going to happen that season, I was like, N- yes, <laughs> it's going to be so awesome. Because I, I, I wasn't sure if they were going to actually do it. Like with, you know, Rick's hand, they just gave it, they gave it to Merle, you know. So I was like, oh, man, I hope they don't give it to another character. Like I'd really be so cool to do that. Um, and then I spent one day with the eye patch on. And I realized how terrible the next few years of my life were going to be on that show. <laughs> You you lose all all depth perception and you bump into things and it's it is like the 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 level of fear that courses through your veins when you're sitting in the in this in a scene you're talking to someone and you just hear like a wasp or something like buzzing around and you see it in your peripheral vision and you can't tell how far away it is because you only have one eye and you can't like if it goes into the other side and you just hear it buzzing around you can't like come out of the scene because you have to be a professional you know and <laughs> stay in it and. Uh, uh, yeah, it was um, it was it was pretty terrible. But the actual filming of the scene <laughs> was great. Yeah, we were like trying to like line it up perfectly with like the panel from the comics, and it was uh, just such a such an awesome thing to get to get to play out. My second question is something I've always, when I first heard they were doing it, I hoped that it would happen. I didn't. They didn't end up doing it. So with The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, how that's Rick and Michonne's show, I assume you've seen it, right? Yeah, I watched the, I watched the first episode. I haven't seen the rest of it yet. I'm waiting to binge it. But yeah, I, I, know, what, I know what happens and how, how it goes. So if, someone ha- if they had called you and asked you, would you have returned to play Carl in like a dream sequence with Rick Grimes? And if so, how would you have preferred that to go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't, I don't know if, uh, you know, I think the it's 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 kind of like a fine line to to dance, you know, with it of of like how to do it, when to do it, and and what the right way is to do it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've uh, you know talked with with Scott Gimple every now and then about like, you know, um, just to keep keeping keeping the door open for for things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see one day if it uh, if it were to happen, I'd have to get a wig or something, <laughs> you know, put the eye patch back on. But um, yeah, you know, it's uh, if. It's 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 all about it like really making sense and it, it can't just be fan service or um, or or just be there just as like a shock value you know what I mean yeah. it like really needs to be there for a really good reason and um, that uh, the reason just hasn't hasn't come up yet. All right. Yeah. 
How did you feel when you read the script and you knew they were going to kill off Carl? Yeah, it was... Um, well, so I, I had found out about a couple of months prior to that, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was it was definitely a bummer. I had, um, you know, being a fan of the comics, I was anticipating a pretty long run on the on the rest of the series, and uh, yeah, to not get to to do a lot of the things that I was really stoked to do for the character was a, was definitely a bummer. But it was um, you know, leaving the show opened up so many other doors for my career, and I got to do a lot of really cool things that I would not have been able to do if I was still on the show. But um, uh, it was also really cool to watch, you know, season nine and watch my 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 good friend Matt Lentz, who played Henry in in season nine. I'm good friends with him in real life, and his sister Madison played Sophia back in season two. So it was uh, really really cool to see him get a lot of the stuff from the comics from from uh, Carl's story and get to play that out. So it was really cool to see someone else take up the mantle of that character and really bring it to life and and uh, and do justice to a character that you know means a lot to myself and a lot of other people. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Um, uh, sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> it's all good. Um, are you interested in getting more voice acting roles in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I did. Uh, I've, d I've done a couple of uh, voice acting related stuff. The um, I got to pl uh, voice Superman actually in a crossover with Ruby in anime and Justice League, which was like the coolest thing ever and like so crazy. It was like the wildest email of my life to get. It was like Justice League X Ruby and like you know pl to play Superman. It was just that was so so crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I would love to do more things like that in the future. It was um, I've, I've I've been auditioning for voice acting stuff for a long time, and I you know still am, and and uh, I really want to try to get into break into um, break into yeah, if, like English dubs for anime because I love anime and oh, yeah. love That's that whole cool. world. You know, it's really really awesome. So um, yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully more. Yeah, have yeah, a thank good you. one. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm actually reading the comics for the first time right now, and I really love how much you see of the characters and like what they're going through. I just wanted to know if there's something that stands out to you in the comics, whether it be um, difference in story or difference in character from the show. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, oh man, there, you know, there was a lot that that we that we did or didn't do between the comics and the show. Um, Oh man, I'm trying to think of just. I mean, I think in general the comics were just like more, just like way more brutal, you know, and like really gory and <laughs> showing like. Oh, hello. No, there it goes. Just kidding. Check. Hello. There we go. Nice. Um, yeah, it was. It was. It was definitely really, really, you know, brutal and gory. And so I'm kind of glad that we that we scaled it back a little bit. I don't think we needed to go like quite as intense, especially with like showing some of the the character deaths in the comics. Like, you know, we didn't need to go as far in the comics with Glenn's, you know, Glenn's death in the in the show. Um, we really we got close to it, but it it could have been worse. So, um, I'm, yeah, I am kind of glad that we scaled things back a little bit here and there for this for the sake of of, of viewer, you know, traumatizing our, our audience, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there, there really are, it's, it's, it's hard to, like, pick out, you know, things, I do, personally, I like the ending of the comics, well, I'm a little biased, obviously, but I like the ending of the comics better, in my opinion, it's, like, it's a really just nice wrap-up to the, to the, um, to the story, and it does it in a way that, like, expands the world, you know, and, like, leaves it kind of open-ended, you know, but um, but leaves it in a way that's, like, hopeful and, and promising and, like, that, um, that, that, you know, that Rick did exactly what he set out to do, which was make the, make, the, you know, get the world back to as normal as, as possible for, for his son. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, yeah, it was really cool. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. Also, what's your favorite anime? My favorite anime? Yeah. It, okay, it's a bit, bit of a normie one, but it, Death Note is like at the, at the top for me. Death I Note's love, amazing. I love Death Note, one. yeah. That's a lot of people are like, ugh, ugh, Death Note, but like, I love it. It's me too. Awesome. It was one of my first ones. I yes. get it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, how you doing? Hey, doing all right. So, what was it like to play Peter Parker? 
That was sick. That was another cool one. Yeah. So I uh, I got to play um, play Peter Parker in just a short horror take on Spider Man. It's out on YouTube. It's called The Spider. But yeah, it, it was it was so so cool. And man, I have so much respect for all of the uh, you know Toby and Andrew and Tom. Like man, crawling up a wall is way harder than it looks because it's like it's like sideways, right? You're like on the ground, like you know crawling horizontally when it needs to look vertically you know and when you're like like this that's a lot of weight on your on your fingers and it was, it was really hard to make it not look like a, i'd like to like stay close enough to the wall to where it looks like i'm like rock climbing basically but um oh man yeah it was just it was such a blast and such a fun like fun way to get to reverse engineer uh, you know, between, I mean, Superman as well, like, it's reverse engineer these characters and really get to, like, understand them on a deeper level, and, like, yeah, it's, um, some of these characters are, like, they're, they have kind of, like, sad backstories, you know, and, and in Peter especially, like, I, I found so much, um, so much stuff with just, like, why he's, like, so, so excited about about these like new changes and how like you know he just has never like quite fit in and like you know it gets bullied and whatnot and so it's like um giving him purpose is, and then it goes completely south so it's <laughs> it was uh really really cool to to get to explore these characters in a way that um that uh that people actually care to see so i'm glad you enjoyed it also who's the best spider-man Oh, who's the best Spider-Man? Oh man, you can't do this to me, man. Oh, dude, they're they're all great in their. I feel like okay, I feel like we can all kind of agree they're all great in their own ways, you know. I feel like Toby is like the best Peter Parker. Andrew is like the best Spider-Man, and then Tom is like the be, like great balance of both. You know what I mean? So it's it's uh, it's so hard to pick. So hard to pick. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi, um, I just wanted to tell you, I'm the one who brought you the figure earlier today. Yeah, and yeah. And I just wanted to ask you, do you think that there is a planned sequel for the spider, if in the works or possible? Yeah, we've, we've talked about it, and, um, you know, he has the, the full, like, feature film kind of planned out in the case that, um, you know, anyone comes knocking on the door. He's knocked on doors himself, but, you know, it's um, kind of up to, up to those studios that actually own the IP if they want to you know, let it out to us, but, um, yeah, we've talked about more, um, shooting some, like, additional stuff, some additional, like, scenes here and there, or potentially, like, doing, um, uh, there's, you know, a whole, like, Green Goblin, like, you know, side story that he kind of has in mind, and there's other, um, other actors that we've kind of gotten roped in on the conversations, but nothing set in stone yet, but it would be really cool to continue that, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, got a couple questions. First, how did it feel to be the head storyline and the momentum for the next season, then the next moment get bit? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, um, it was, it was definitely a bummer, but, you know, it's, it's, that's, it's just how it goes with the show, and, um, and, you know, it's, uh, I'm just, I'm just grateful that I got to be on a show for eight years. Like, that's something that there's not a lot of actors out there that get to say, or even say that they get to grow up on a show for eight years. Like, that's, that's something that is, is so, so rare to find in, um, you know, with, with any actor. So, I'm just so lucky and appreciative and grateful for the amazing ride that that show gave me and the opportunity to come and meet all of you guys you know still seven years after i've left the show come and still be talking to you guys that still love the show and love the characters and new fans you guys that are like just binging and starting to watch the show as of the last like couple of years it's like it's really really awesome all right um what did you feel that your death added to the franchise you know, I think uh, a lot of a lot of characters on the show. It's 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 kind of a bummer. They 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 get killed off and they don't really ever get brought up again. <laughs> you know, and I think with Carl, it was a really it was really cool to um, have the character get killed off and have it have his his like. He, it's still today, you know, in, in in the ones who live, be like, be a, a prevalent figure in that in that series. So it was just like so 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 cool to um, get to have that lasting impact, that like that hope 
for for these characters you know the hope that there is um a better world out there that they have to that they can build towards yeah cool yeah and since nobody's behind me i'm gonna go for three what was your favorite season <laughs> well you do have someone behind you yeah. but yeah, and, it's, yeah. i mean and she's technically gonna be last i didn't want her to have to stand Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. But what, what, what was the? Was, I'll answer what was the question. Favorite season? Oh, fa- yeah, favorite season, season four. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was such a blast. It was great. I just wanted to know: Do you keep like in contact with any of the um, actors from The Walking Dead? Yeah, I, I, well, I get to see a lot of them at, at these uh, at these conventions. Usually, there's it's not just me at, the, at these cons, and uh, yeah, it's always great. It's always like a big reunion. We come back and we get to see each other and talk about what other projects we've been working on or doing, and um, and uh, yeah, it's always it's always so great. It's such a blast, and um, yeah, it's 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 awesome. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of like. Um, you know, like uh, when you're working like a normal job, you know, and you move, you have great friends that you meet while working on that job and you go to the next job and like you love the friends that you made there. But now, you know, you're working with a new group of people and sometimes you get to see your old, your old uh, coworkers, but it's just, that's just how it goes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Are you going to let me go? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. She's going to be the last question, guys. When hey, she gets done, we're going to, we're going to scrunch in and going to get another picture. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Oklahoma. We really appreciate it. And I'm really curious, in a calendar year, how much time was spent on location? And were your parents with you? And were you homeschooled? Yeah, so we... Uh, we would spend it was it was so it was seven months of shooting. It was from May to November, and uh, for well, starting in season three, it was from May to November, and uh, yeah, it was. I mean, we were we were like pretty much. All the exterior scenes were actually the exterior wasn't on a sound stage or anything, and um, the interiors were on sound stages. The um, uh, yeah, and so pretty much like usually is like half the episode was like exteriors on location and outside, and uh, yeah, it was a big good chunk of the year. Luckily for the first eight episodes or so, I wouldn't have to worry about school because it would be during the summer. But then, you know, once August came around and I was in school, it would have to be, if I was working, it's it it kind of, you know, annoying, like technical with the, with the rules, but um, I have to have like a certain amount of hours of, of like school time while I'm on set. There has to be a uh, on-set tutor and all sorts of stuff. And I was homeschooled for a couple of years, but the I was losing my mind just being at home, you know, and like... Yeah. You know, so I wanted to go back to public school, and my parents told production, like, "Hey, Chandler wants to go back to school. Figure it out." <laughs> and uh, and so they met with the with the you know with the, with the county, the school county that I I um, lived up in, and they worked it out because I was still able to like you know drive down to set and go back up and go to school on days that I wasn't working and missed a certain amount of days but I you know stayed on top of all my schoolwork and wasn't you know failing any classes or anything that was the one caveat that like hey we can, he can do this he just can't like be failing classes or anything so yeah they all worked it out and it was it was great um, they had my dad they hired my dad as a studio teacher because he had been teaching special ed for 25 years and would qualify as a as a studio teacher which which was which was awesome and um, and yeah it was great I mean I, I was very lucky to have super supportive parents to like take me down to set and to auditions and all sorts of stuff and and uh, yeah it worked out worked out really well, well that's awesome thank you so much yeah thank you alright guys